Hi everyone, I'm going to do a journey for a client and I want to read over the goals. And then I'm going to jump right into it because it's a 30 minute session so I want to, don't want to waste too much time. I feel at this point in time with all the energy work I've done over the past couple of years, like I'm heading in a more balanced direction for my life. So I'm interested in getting a message guided by spirit on whatever I need to hear about my energy at this time in my life to assist me going forward. I just want to just still think about this for a second and just connect on to the person. I'm asking spirit to to give me a message that would help, that will best help him on this on his journey. To Asamokiano. I have a uh, like it's um. Kind of like something knocking on like on the glass window, like I'm sitting in a sitting in a house or sitting in a car or just sitting down somewhere or even in a, an actual glass orb and somebody's banging on the glass and I'm looking out from inside and then there's a bunch of people banging on the glass. So if you're sitting in a room with many windows, and each window, we could say glass doorways, it's a better way of putting it. And you have people banging on the doorways, which, which door do you open first? You kind of have to just go, okay, what I have to just see what everyone feels like I need to open first and I'll go for it. So you gotta go to the first door and you're like, wait a second. I can't even see what's behind this door and when I'm getting all these doors banging all at once and it's becoming overwhelming. So how am I ever supposed to know which door to go to open first? Because there's more to it than this. The stuff attached to it, like I just don't open the door. It's like I have all these doors being like all these possibilities. But how do I know I'm opening the right door? How do I know I'm going in the right direction? There's all these doors being offered to, to me right now to open any one of them. And it, but I don't know what's on the other side of the door. So do I just sit here and wait till they all go away or at least a few of them go away so there's less of a choice? Or do I simply just pick a door and just go through it? So you make a choice to open door, say door number seven. And you look at that door and you go to open the door and all of a sudden everything stops except for door number seven. Is the only door that's actually any noises coming from. So then you're like, then you second guess yourself. You step back and you go to go to door number three. There's no sound coming from door number three. But well, you know there was at one time. But then you go, well, what happens if I go to door number two? Or door number eight? Door number 13? Or maybe door number 20? But there's still only door number seven knocking on your door. And you don't hear anything else. Like all the other doors are silent. Then you go to go. Then you back into this scenario, like second guessing yourself. So do I go through the loudest door or do I go through the quiet ones? 
At one time, all of them were making noise. But now there's only one. So do it go in a direction that's the noisiest, or do it go in a direction that's silent? Hmm. So then I said, you know what, I'm going to go to door number three. I'm not going to go to seven anymore. So you go, door number three, and just before you open that, there's a slight knock on the door, and, all, and door number seven stops making noise. But it's a lot... Not as loud though. It's really subtle. It's it's almost like it's being knocked by on a lower part of the door by a very soft, and you just stop instantly, and you think to yourself, "Do I open door number seven, or do I open door number three?" You go back to, to open door number seven, and it's like is it, it's not making any noise anymore. Just like all the other doors stop. The only noise is coming a faint knocking on door number three. So you just go to you go to open door number seven. All of a sudden, it's knocking is loud, just like it was before. Just before you, every single time, you make a decision, and just as before you're going to open that door, the, the, the it starts making sound, and you do this to multiple other doors, and it does the same thing, depending on the door is being knocked on on different areas depending on whatever door you're looking at. So if you're noticing that there's a specific pattern, almost like a wave pattern, from the bottom to the, of the door all the way to the top, back down again, and you're noticing that the certain doors it peaks at, the, at and it's the loudest, and then other doors are quieter but are near the bottom. And you know that this wave goes all the way around you, and, you, and the doors are really close together and you know it's very interesting that it creates this wave pattern and the, the bottom of the wave is quiet the top of the wave is high loud noisy and you still haven't walked through a door but you notice the pattern though and you're still thinking about what door to go through Hmm. Sometimes thinking too much doesn't allow you to walk through a doorway. It just keeps you thinking that you're actually going forward, but you are discovering things, but you're not actually really actively doing anything except just studying a wave pattern in a door. But again, if you didn't study, you wouldn't know about this wave pattern. You wouldn't know about the different sounds of the doors knocking as they are when all at once they make a really loud noise individually they're not as loud and they're very different even though the pattern goes up and down the door sound is always slightly different but the pitch of the door is very similar when it's down low it's quiet and and uh very subtle but when it's high, it's much louder. But sometimes it's like metal on metal. Sometimes it's wood on wood, rock on rock. It's, it's, it's very unique. And then you discover that each door is obviously made out of a different material. But also, you notice that each door itself is, is, is different material, but the person knocking on a door is using something that is different material each time so you know you know the door goes from low to high different variations of sounds you know the doors are made out of different materials and you know the person or the thing that's making the knocking sound is using different materials depending on what door it is and also in each door so if there's 10 wooden doors they use 10 different materials on that wooden door to create a different sound and it's it's creating that every door you go through never repeats it's never exactly the same so each doorways is going to be different 
it's never going to be the same even though it seems like it's the same door pitch slow it's quiet it's going to have a different it's a different door sound it's in some ways it's a different material it never actually repeats itself but again you haven't gone through any doors but you're discovering a lot about what is going on so then you open door number seven and there's a brick wall on the other side and you scratch your head and you start opening all the other doors some doors have metal some doors have wood on the other side but no door leads to anywhere and some are even glass but not one door leads to anything or this is what it looks like to the naked eye but you discover that when you touch the actual wall it's not solid it, it waves it moves it flows and it creates like a beautiful color like different colors so you have all these doors opened and then you're going through and you're hitting you're sticking your hand in and you're running around sticking your hand in every single one of the doors and moving through the full in other words from the left to the right you're putting your hand into the thing and moving left to right and it's creating a, a, an interesting light show because as you stick your it creates light and beautiful rainbowy light but it doesn't instantly stop so if you stick your hand in a door and pull it back out it creates a ripple of light that goes in continuously for a few minutes and then slowly starts to stop and now the it's like a throwing a rock in a lake you're going to create ripples and it's going to go for quite a while and eventually the ripples will hit shore and it'll stop and eventually the wall water will become still again it's the same thing with each of the doorways are you going to go through or not and there's one part where you actually get pushed through the door with your back facing the person or thing there's one you notice the thing coming and you turn around and you push it in and all of a sudden you see that there's a part of yourself that's being pushed through the door and you look and you can see every this part of yourself is standing in front of every single one of these doors and being pushed through simultaneously through the doorway and then the doorways close shut slam shut and you don't even really get a good look at what it is that pushed you you're not even sure if it was yourself or you just know you're pushed by something and you thought you seen it but then you realize it didn't really see anything at all and now there's many different versions of yourself that are sitting on the other side of this door some are in the ocean some are on the beach some are in a dark room some are in an old house some are in a field field of flowers field of long grass a forest in space on the moon standing in front of the sun and each one of these doorways creates a specific experience none of them are the same they're all very unique with each one you're in an experience the one that really stands out for me right now is you experiencing the sun and you're standing in front of the sun and there's like a wall of sun like it's just it's mind boggling how beautiful it is actually it's it's kind of hard to explain it actually brings tears to your eyes because of the way it feels to your soul the sun moves you and it's the feeling it enters your heart and it changes something deep within your own psyche 
and it makes you cry. And you're wondering how that's possible. How is simply just looking at the sun close up make you cry? There's something extraordinarily beautiful about this image, about you standing in front of the sun. And most, part of you is, in, like, is darker, sort of silhouette -y. But there's also a golden halo around you. And the front of you is, is just lit up like Christmas tree. Well, not really like a Christmas tree, more like a, it is lit up in beautiful golden light. And you're, you're seeing the sun for the first time. And you're experiencing it and it's making you cry because it's healing you. It's going deep within your soul and healing you. And you just allow the sunlight to go through you and in, right through your back. And what once was shadow is now glowing with light and you become just like the sun and you disappear because you just look like the outer edges of the sun now. You can barely even see where you are. And eventually you become just part of the sun. And it, it just, it's, it's extremely healing for you. And there's another part of you that walks along the beach. And you feel the sand between your toes. And you start to run and you, you run and you hit something sharp and you, you your foot gets cut a bit and you sit down quickly and you look at your foot and it's a very minor cut but you're curious of what you stepped on and there's really very little blood the sand instantly kind of absorbs and kind of it's just like a minor scratch but you felt it it felt painful and you look back and you see there's something shiny and there's just a little tiny bit of blood on it and you actually start taking the sand away and you thought something was small but it's actually quite large it looked like if just a small shard of glass and you start moving the sand away and you start digging it up and it's like you realize the whole sand the whole beach is part of this and it goes into the ocean and it's a huge building it was buried within the sand and you go down into the building and it's like kind of tilted sideways and you're it's it's kind of like it's a library actually and the library is very 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 ancient there's the books some books are fallen off onto the floor it's like the tower slightly tilted and you in the library is like a tower and in the tower this full of books and some of the books have, have, have fallen onto the floor and you're trying to you're looking at this and you're thinking how am i going to get the tower to stand back upright again And there's a book that's, it's like a whitish blue. And you walk over to it and you open the book and you start. It's kind of like a howling sound that you make. It's, it's really hard to reproduce, but it's like a, a howling sound. Like you're howling at the moon like a wolf would. And you actually turn into a wolf. And you, you, you actually make a really loud sound and it's like, it's like, it's like there's a chain on another wolf that splits the sky and turns it to night and pulls the, and pulls the whole tower upright. And you're standing there in the darkness as a wolf and you bite the chain and your wolf is set free. 
and the tower is standing straight up. And you howl at the moon again, and it turns to day. And you're in a, you're a person, and you're standing at the at the doorway of this huge tower. And you walk inside, and the books are pristine, amazing looking. And so you start sitting down and reading as many books as you can. And there's a part of your soul that's still there reading the books. And he connects onto you by holding. He put his forehead. He puts his forehead against your forehead, takes both his fingers, and places them on like both his hands and places his fingers on your temple. And he starts chanting in a really low, deep sound. And it and it it makes your heart glow really bright, but it also creates your vertebrae to glow ridiculously bright, and it shoots energy from the bottom, like like just the bottom of your back of your backbone, all the way to your into your brain, and then your brain glows really bright. Now your brain is going just as bright as your heart, and the connection between your heart and your brain are one and your vertebrae is is like the conduit between both and it's glowing really really bright as well Hmm. and you're wondering when you're sitting in this library There's so much to explore. There's so much to read that it would, it's like it would just take you so long. But there's a part of your stuff that's staying here and passing knowledge on to you as time goes on, as it, when it's the right moment, and what it is that you can actually filter through and understand in this lifetime. It's like he could literally take a fraction of a book and is full of knowledge and understanding. And that's all you would be able to understand in this lifetime and, and compared to with millions of books. You can't even go through like a few pages in a way or a few a, a small section of the book to truly comprehend the power of this place. This is what it's like to be a human being. This part of yourself is telling you that as a spirit, you could read through one book at a time and have no problem remembering every single word. As a human being, you only can remember a fraction of a book. But that in itself is an extraordinary task in, the, in this world. And he's downloading all kinds of information into you. Tons of information, non-stop information. And then he shows this, like you walk to the, it's kind of like, um, it's the balcony. You walk out to the balcony and you're looking out into the ocean. And you're on a, like, almost like, a, it's, it's, it's very similar. In a way, it reminds me of a big old lighthouse, but it's way cooler than that. It's like a massive statue, or a tower, I should say. It goes well above the sea, but since it's at the sea, it reminds me of a huge lighthouse but it's really beautiful ornate structure it does have when you look up it does have a light that shines out into the ocean which there the ocean and the land are representations of your brain water and the rest like it's almost like it they're putting the head like the beach is like one side of the brain and the oceans like the other
it's what it, it's it's kind of like that and this library is a it's kind of like all all everything that you ever know in every lifetime and you have access to this and there's a part of yourself that's been studying these books and relaying information to you as much as it possibly can this is a, this is what the message is about and there's a lot more meaning here than you think because the studying of things is very important to you the studying of the doorways at the beginning of studying of the library this, this is a very powerful message for you because some people would simply just walk through a door and never truly understand all the other stuff that you discovered even before you walk through the door itself this is a lot about who you are a lot about your purpose to be able to look at something study it And find something that somebody couldn't see or hear or listen, smell. To experience. It's all part of the experience. I see that you're in a black room and you're sending out radar sounds like a bat pulses of energy that go out from where you're in a like a meditative position and you and it kind of you see everything you see all the details every for instance if there was a brush on the floor if there's a shoe if there was an insect on the wall on the ceiling on the floor if there was a person here a monster here You would see everything, even something floating into the air, you see a piece of dust. And this is also what you do. You study, even in the darkest places, you're able to study the finest detail. I see you in a forest. And there's many hidden things in this forest. So you take your time and you move and you study and you knock and you look into trees, look, look behind. Like, like if there's a pile of um, leaves, you would sort through the leaves. You would see brush and you'd, you'd move the brush aside. You would see a wall and you would touch the wall, every aspect of the wall, just in case there's a a passageway that's hidden, a button that could be pressed, something that was forgotten, something that wasn't undiscovered. And you see, I see you in a field of flowers. And you know, the flowers itself, you could smell flowers. And as you smell, each individual scent is separated cataloged I see like um, a flower I see 50 different flowers in a book each one with a description of the smells the color the height the texture how it makes you feel categorized logged This is interesting because this is how your soul works. It's part of your gift to humanity. Hmm. I see um, sometimes though you get stuck. It shows me there's a spear inside a solid rock and it's loose, but you can't get it out no matter how hard you try. 
get stuck. But then I see another version of yourself that comes down. It's a lot, it's really, really bright and it touches you in the back. It says, remember, and you start getting images from the library coming into your mind, like images of makes you feel at ease because it starts telling you things like when you're stuck, the worst thing that you could do is force it to try to move. So it, you, there's a part of yourself that goes back into the black room and you're meditating and you're sending energy out. So you stop trying to remove the spear and you simply sit down and you allow the energies to flow out of you and they simply just touch everything. And you, f and you discover that simply just breathing for 24 hours, everything relaxes. And this is just an example of information given. And then that spear automatically falls out itself. And you're able to take the spear and hold it high up in the air and you cheer. It's like fighting a war without fighting at all. But it has the same results, it has the same celebration in the end. That's what they want to show you. You just never know what you're going to experience. But every experience is important because it teaches you something that the spirit world wanted to share with you. But it shows how extraordinary our souls are that they're willing to go through so many different experiences just to simply say one message. But also stay behind in places where it knows it can grow knowledge to help you along your journey. Our spirits are always helping us. Parts of our souls are always helping us in our life journey. We just need to remember that. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.